This is Steve with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a cylinder head on this 2015 YZ250F. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a cylinder head on this 2015 YZ250F using Yamaha OEM parts and these Pro-X titanium valves. These steps will also apply to 2014 newer YZ250Fs and most modern day four stroke dirt bikes. Always refer to your OEM service manual for more information, proper procedure, and torque specs. To do this job, we have a list of stuff we're gonna need. Let's start out with parts. We're gonna use these quality Pro-X titanium valves, Pro-X shims, and OEM Yamaha valve seals. We're gonna need some basic tools as well, and a really good torque wrench. Um, there's a lot of specialty tools we're gonna need, some gasket scrapers, a machinist's edge, a valve compressor tool, some uh, valve guide measurement tools, and, install and seal installers, tusk feeler gauges, a caliper, uh, we've got some new way valve seat cutters, uh, some contact cleaner assembly lube, and uh, a good Sharpie marker. So we went ahead and removed our cylinder head. If you need more information or how to do that, check out our how to rebuild the top end video. Now I want to start off in stress organization. It's, it's key in just the whole process. There's lots of little parts and the more organized you are, the easier it'll be for disassemble, assemble, um, and keeping track of everything. So we've laid out some paper, got our tools, drew a little diagram here of a head, and uh, so that as we disassemble, we can write stuff down, we can place the parts and keep track of everything. So let's start off with our disassembly and remove our intake boot, our Coolant sensor, you know, we've already moved the cam caps and cams, but I've sat them here for display. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and remove all that. Now that we've got the cams out, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the shim buckets and shims. So you can just use a magnet for this. Sometimes the shim will come out inside the bucket. Just make sure not to lose it and keep them together. So I've drawn this out so it's easy for me to just lay out So now that we have those removed, let's go ahead and remove the valves. To do that, we're going to need our tusk spring remover tool. Uh, there is a valve spring retainer, valve keepers, the spring, a valve seal, and then the valve spring seat. And all those kind of work as one to hold the valve in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now be careful when you're doing this not to hit any machine surfaces. You don't want to damage any of those. So it's kind of tedious. Just take your time. Just use a magnet to pull out the keepers. Now I want to point out another thing. Um, all of these parts need to go back exactly the same spot that they went in. They, they wear into those specific places and after measuring everything you'll see that, but uh, just for the wear characteristics you want to always replace it in the same spot if you end up reusing that part. Next let's remove the valve spring and valve spring retainer. And now I'm going to push the valve out. Now let's remove the valve stem seal. You can use needle nose pliers or a pick to do this. Now let's remove the valve spring seat. Now that we have that one entirely out, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the, for the other three. Now that we've got everything removed from the head, let's go ahead and we'll scrape the, ga the gasket surface area. Be careful not to damage it, and we need to wash everything off. So you can use a, a good solvent or a suitable cleaning solution, um, a soft scrub brush and compressed air to do that. But you just want it as clean as possible, and then we'll go ahead and inspect everything. Now that we have our head and all of our parts cleaned, and it's time to inspect. So we get your OEM service manual out, and start checking everything and referring to your manual for measurements and specs. Um, let's start off with uh, cams and cam caps. Um, so first you want to look at the cam with all your mating surfaces like your uh, journal and your bearing. Um, you can check out the sprocket, see for the wear there. And uh, this one's got a decompressor so you want to check out the function of that. 
that moves freely. There's a pin that goes in and out, and that presses on the bucket of your of your can or of your valve, which opens it and releases some compression as when you start it. Um, now your cam caps, um, you definitely want to clean and blow out the oil passages so you can get all the contaminants out of those. Uh, check the, the mating surfaces there for the bearing and the plane bearing and um, make sure that's in good shape. Uh, same thing on the intake side. And then we can move to the valve train. Uh, we'll show you the example of the old valve and, and the new valve. Um, the exhaust valves are uh, in pretty decent shape. Got quite a bit of buildup. It was burning a lot of oil. Um, the intake valves, however, if you can see right there, there's a nice big groove on the actual surface, the valve seat surface that is cupped out. Now this person had to shim their valves a few times and that is the reason why. And when you compare it to the new valve surface, it's nice and smooth for a good sealing surface. Next, let's look at the valve spring seat. These things don't take a lot of wear. Same with the, uh, the valve spring retainer. Um, you just want to inspect those, make sure there isn't any, any abnormal wear there in the spring. Sometimes the springs will break um, or if they flex to the side, it's good to just replace them. You want to inspect the bucket um, for galling on the side and the top. Now the valve keepers are pretty important. Uh, you might have to replace them. These are in good shape, so we're going to go ahead and reuse them. There's a little groove on inside the valve keeper and then the top of the valve and it fits right in that groove. And when you install them, the spring retainer slides right over top of them and it's shaped like a V so it presses in on the valve. So basically the spring pressure keeps your valve keepers in from falling out. So we'll go through and inspect all the parts. So now we're gonna move to the head. Um, and inspect it. Let's start off with the head gasket surface. After it's cleaned, you can take a machinist edge and lay that on there and a feeler gauge. And you basically try and slide it underneath the machinist edge. You do that in a few places, you know, refer to your owner's manual for, for these measurements, but that gives you the idea. Now we want to inspect the top half. So you want to look at our cam journals, uh, where our buckets ride. Um, to check cam journal to camshaft gap, install your camshaft, take a piece of plastic gauge, which is essentially a small piece of like, it's like wax type material, and you lay that on your cam journal right here, and then you torque it all down and it will squish that out. Then you would disassemble it and take this and measure how wide it's smashed out, and that will give you the measurement for that. Now let's start uh, by inspecting the valve guides. The valve guides are pretty crucial uh, as they control the stability of your valve. And so to measure those, you'd start on the stem of your valve uh, and you want to use a caliper and measure in a, in a few places to get some consistency along the valve. These are obviously new, they're going to be pretty consistent, uh, but if you were to use old valves, um, that's how you would check it. Now the inside of the valve guide. There's a few different ways. Uh, there's some machine pins that are a specific size you can stick in there. Um, I have this little tool that I can stick inside the valve guide and it will mushroom out, touch the outer walls, and then I'll measure that with my caliper. And then you subtract one from another and that's how you get the gap. And all these specs are in your service manual. Let's move to uh, valve seats, which take the majority of the wear in your valve train. Each valve seat has three different cuts in it, and you need to worry about the, the middle one as that's the actual sealing surface between the head and the valve. So an easy way to check that is take your valve and a Sharpie and color the mating surface on your valve and on the cylinder head, and then you will install the valve. I like to use a rubber hose and slide it over the end of the valve and twist the valve in the head, and those two surfaces will rub on each other. Now you can see on both surfaces, the head and the valve, where they're mating. And so you take your caliper and you measure the width of that on your valve and your head, and that needs to be a certain width. Uh, if it's out of, if it's wider or skinnier, then you really need to send it to a machine shop or use a tool to cut that surface again so that it's where it needs to be. 
Now repeat that on all of your valves and valve seats um, uh, and take a little contact cleaner and clean the Sharpie off and keep moving forward. After you've done your valve seat inspection and if you need to cut your valves, there's a few options. You could take it to a good machine shop or a performance shop or maybe even a dealership. Uh, if you have the tools to do it, you can do that as well. New Way makes a kit. It comes with uh, different angles of cutting bits um, and alignment pins that you slide your bits over top and a T-handle and you just lightly put pressure on that to cut the seat. Now that our valve seats are cut, I want to talk about titanium valves and steel valves. Um, titanium valves, you do not lap them. And lapping means you take a virtually a liquid sandpaper and you stick it on the surface of the valve and you sand both surfaces so that they seal and meet better. Um, it, you can't do that with titanium, but you can do it with steel. We're using titanium today, so we don't need to do it. But if you were to use Pro-X steel valves, you would want to lap your valves. Now our head is ready for reassembly. But before we do that, I want to talk about a few things. If you had catastrophic failure, meaning you have bent valves or your piston broke and it damaged your head, we have complete OEM replacement heads that you can get here and to performance packaged heads that come with cams, the whole bit. You can buy all of the individual parts to build your own, like we're using these titanium valves from Pro-X, but you can get all that here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC. So let's get started and rebuild this head. First, let's start with installing our valve spring seat. You might need to use needle nose to put this in. Next, let's do our valve stem seal. Take a little assembly lube, we'll put a little bit on there. Now we've got these really cool tools from Motion Pro that are specifically sized to these and you just slide those right on and slide that right down in the guide and you just push it right on like that and you're done. Next we will uh, put some assembly lube on our valve stem and install that. Then we have our valve springs. Now some of them are painted, some of them are not. Um, you want to make sure that the closer the coils are, are to the bottom, not at the top. And your valve spring retainer. And then we're going to use our valve spring compressor tool from Tusk again. And now our valve keepers. Now we're going to put our old valve shim in. Now we know that we're going to have to re-shim this as we've changed it to new valves, uh, but we'll do that when we install the cams. Now we'll put the bucket in with a little assembly lube. Make sure that just slides right in easy. Don't fight it. Now that we have our bucket installed, we want to take a socket and a hammer and just lightly tap it to seat the valve keepers. Now that we've done that, we just repeat the same process for the other three valves. Now that we have all of our valves in, let's go ahead and put in our cams and our cam caps. Take a little assembly lube, our clip, Now that we have those cams in, let's go ahead and torque down our cam caps at 7.2 foot-pounds per Yamaha's procedure. Make sure they move nice and freely. Now that we have those torqued, let's go ahead and check our valve clearance with our Tusk feeler gauge. Okay, so this one is in spec. Go ahead and do the same process on the other three valves. If your valve clearance is out of spec, we have a very detailed video on how to shim and adjust your valves. So we're going to go ahead and throw our intake and our coolant sensor on. And that's it. I hope this helps you when rebuilding the cylinder head on your YZ250F. For more, come visit our website, RockyMountainATVMC.com, for more parts, apparel, and accessories. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Steve. Catch you next time.